On day one, I spawned in as a baby lion. In front of me was my fierce father, the almighty fire lion. Son, we are in big trouble. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a caged entry. Dad, where are we? Just then, the cage slowly opened. We walked out only to see we were inside of a large gladiator arena with a huge crowd watching over us. A fire lion. Welcome. You have something that I want. Something that I need. And I, Invictus, will take it. Just then, I noticed a fire amulet that was tied around my father's neck. Without hesitation, my father took the amulet off and threw it over to me. This caused both of us to transform. I was now a baby fire lion with five fire hearts. And my dad was just a regular lion? Dad, what just happened? Son, this amulet grants the holder the essence of the flame. You must protect it with your life. Invictus saw this and started to charge forward. Escape now. I'll hold him off. No, dad. But before I could finish my sentence, my dad ran forward and started to fight off Invictus. His attacks were very strong. And with one ground slam, he took out my dad. No! I knew that I had to run. But as I was, I accidentally ran over wooden trap doors that burnt away. Ah! He must not get away! On day two, I fell down a dark, scary hole. Ah! I heard heavy breathing throughout it and knew that I wasn't alone. Uh, who's there? Just then, a monster slowly emerged from the shadows. Oh no. It charged in and started to attack me. Ah! Thankfully, since it had long legs, I was able to temporarily hide underneath it, confusing it. Think, come on think. Just then, I noticed a passageway in the room. I guess that's my only option. I ran through it, re-alerting the beast. It was chasing behind me, catching up by the second. Oh no, it's a dead end. I turned around and watched as the monster slowly made its way towards me. I'm done for. As I was losing all of my hope, a brave magma giraffe emerged from the lava pool. Uh, who are you? No time. Come with me now. You want me to jump in the lava? Oh no, here goes nothing. I jumped inside and to my surprise, I wasn't dying. Sweet. Now, follow me. You have a lot to learn. The magma giraffe and I emerged from the lava outside. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a nethery looking Sahara. Whoa. I also noticed my fire hearts were low and I was so hungry. Yeah, take this. The giraffe threw me over some fire fruits. I ate them, which caused my health to instantly heal. Whoa, fire heals me now. Correct, Fozo. With that amulet you hold around your neck, you have no idea how strong you can get. My name's Jenga. I used to be best friends with your father. So you're saying I can become stronger, but how? Oh, young one, why tell you when I can show you? Follow me. On day four, I was brought over to a cliffside. I looked down the valley and can see it held a gravesite of some sorts. What is this place? Just then, I was punched down by Jenga. Ah! What the heck? I heard growling and coyotes emerged from behind the tombstones. Oh, is this a little snack we see? Uh, let me back up, uh, please. These coyotes are not welcome here. Fight them, use the amulet. The coyotes charged in and started to attack me. I slashed at them using more energy than I ever had, which caused fire to emerge from my paws. Whoa, I have a fire slash? I kept using it, which caused the coyotes to flee from the gravesite. We will be back. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Because of my victory, a large rumble surrounded the area. What's happening? A fire jaguar spirit then emerged from the largest tombstone there. Who are you? You have brought peace to my grave. And for that, I owe you this. My amulet on my body began to transform. I was able to grow out my very own lion mane. I gained five more hearts and all also noticed 
I had a new ability. I wonder what this could do. Thank you, Fozo. So every time my amulet upgrades, so do I? Precisely, Fozo. This jaguar spirit was the first of five animal spirits that guard the savannah. Each one you help will make your fire amulet stronger. Then I will do whatever I can to help all five so that I can be strong enough to take down that gladiator. Where do I begin? On day five, Jenga and I made our way back to the nether hill. I think this is the perfect place for our new animal kingdom. I went out and gathered enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I built up a nice fire-themed lion den. While I was doing this, Jenga built himself a long house. I have a long neck, Fozo. Hey, I'm not judging. From there, I designated an area for each spirit I set to rest. The jaguar one is done. Now, four more to go. I wonder what type of spirits the next ones are. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. He believed that as the holder of that amulet, it brought the responsibility of protecting this climate and all the animals within it. Well, I'll make sure that his belief lives on. <laughs> what was that? I ran over only to see a small baby zebra being chased by a couple of the gladiator's men. Oh no, I have to help. On day six, I chased after the gladiators. Jeez, these guys are fast. They were able to corner the little baby zebra into a dead end. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Shut up. No, I rushed in and jumped in between the both of them. Stay back. The gladiators were all surprised to see me and began to attack me. They had strong swords made out of a rare metal, which did a lot of damage. I knew that I had to fight back. I guess it's time to test out my new ability. I used it, which shot out fire blasts wherever I aimed. Awesome. The two gladiators were tough, but thanks to my new upgrade, they didn't stand a chance. That takes care of them. You didn't have to help me, but you did. Of course. Those men and their leader are pure evil. Anything to help out another animal. They are evil. They captured my parents and were trying to capture me too. I miss them so much. I can tell how sad my new zebra friend was. Do you know where they took them? Of course. It's not too far from here. My name is Stripe. Nice to meet you, Stripe. Now, show me the way. Let's set your family free. On day seven, Stripe brought me over to a gladiator outpost. I noticed a cage there that was full of zebras. Look, Stripe, your family. Oh no, they don't look so good. Stay here. I went ahead and snuck forward. I noticed there were lots of men on guard here. There was no way I can take all these guys at once. You think Invictus is going to enjoy our catch? Maybe. It's not the fire lion, but who cares? The show must go on. The show? What show? I then noticed nearby trees and had an idea. I snuck my way through and used my fire slash to set the trees on fire. I then ran away and watched. Come on, spread. The fire all began to spread, which alerted the guards. Fire, we need to put it out before it spreads to the camp. All the men then left and I knew I had a short window. I rushed over to the zebras who were all surprised to see me. Fire lion? Now's not the time. Let's go. I set them free and we all left together back to Stripe. Son! Mom! Thank you, Fozo. This means a lot. Of course. I've heard about you and know of your quest. You seek the five spirits of the fire amulet. Yeah, I am looking for the second one. Well, young one, I know exactly where you can find it. On day eight, I sent the zebras off towards my base and was on my way towards the second fire spirit, the scorpion. I just hope he's friendly. I followed the zebra's directions until I found an entryway into a sacred tomb of some sorts. Okay, scary. I made my way through, trying not to set off any traps. After a long trek, I finally reached an ancient tomb site. Inside, it held an intimidating scorpion statue. Yep, I'm in the right place. Um, hello, fire scorpion, sir? Just then, a fire scorpion emerged 
from the statue. Is that a fire lion? Ah, I see you are the holder of the fire amulet. That's right. It was gifted to me from my father, and I need it to stop an evil that is hurting us animals. As a spirit, I have found it hard to be brought peace. No one deems worthy enough to be the true protector of the savannah. Until we find him or her, I shall not rest. Well, that person is me. What do I have to do to prove it? The scorpion then left forward and stung me with his poison. Ah! I started to feel extremely dizzy. Why? You think you're worthy? Prove it. That poison running inside of you is deadly and will make you hallucinate. You must fight it. And if you lose, you die. My vision became blurry and my head started to drift into the sky. On days 9 to 10, I found myself inside of... Wait, where am I? Is this the afterlife? I then looked up and saw the fire scorpion appear in the sky above me. But now, he was ginormous. What happened? This is the land of your hallucination. It's time to tell if you really have what it takes to be the animal's protector. Just then, poison viruses appeared and rushed towards me. So I have to fight the poison? Literally? They all left and tried to suck on my face. Ah! Uh, stay away! Ah! Uh, stay away! I tried my best to dodge them. Every time they would hit me, the more and more weak I started to feel. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. I can't give up. Not now. I fought back, fighting through the poison. I slashed through them and even shot them with my fire shot. They were strong, but I knew if I was going to be the protector, I had to be stronger. I shot one last time and took down the last one. I did it. Well done, lion. Well done. On days 11 to 12, I awoke back inside of the tomb room. I noticed that I had upgraded. I gained five more hearts and was now a full-sized fire lion. Because of this, I had a new ability that allowed me to walk on top of lava. This is awesome. With my fire passed on to you, I have trusted you to keep the animals of this world safe. Is that understood? Yes, I understand, sir. Good. Now go on. Make me proud, Fozo. The fire scorpion then vanished and was put to sleep forever. I promise you won't regret helping me. I headed out of the tomb, and on the way out, I was able to find some iron ore. I mined it and crafted myself a set of iron tools and armor. I was on my way back to base when I ran into a large gladiator arena that was in the process of being built. It was surrounded by a lava moat and right in the center of it was Invictus himself. On days 13 to 14, I decided to take a closer look and figure out what exactly Invictus was doing. You let Fozo destroy our camp? How stupid do you men have to be? But, 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 but sir, uh, we- Silence! We must kill that beast so that I can possess the amulet. Don't come back empty-handed. The men all nodded and left immediately. I would hate to be on his bad side. Oh, wait, I am. Invictus then looked up at a statue. Who is that? After this, father, you will have no reason not to be happy with me. I will get that amulet, and I will be the strongest gladiator to ever exist. I will put on a show. So he wants my amulet just to put on a show? To what? Hurt us animals? What a jerk. I couldn't disguise my anger any longer and drew Invictus's attention. Oh no. You? Me. I won't let you escape again. I won't. Invictus charged at me and I knew that I had to run. I tried, but he was just too fast. He hit me once with his spear and I was already down to one heart. How strong is this guy? I tried to escape the arena, but was 
was quickly cut off at the lava moat by Invictus. I thought I was done for. That when an idea sparked. Using my newest upgrade, I was able to sprint across the moat. I turned around, filled with fear. Oh, you are scared. I can sense it. <laughs> I'll be right there when you least expect it. The clock is ticking. I have to run. I have to get far away from here. Now. On days 15 to 18, I barely made it back to base. I felt my heart beating fast. I could have died. Bozo, there you are. Are you all right? I am now, Jenga. I am now. I turned and saw Stripe and his family at our base. They didn't have homes yet. I went over and made them some that I thought would best suit them. Hopefully now they can feel like they have a safe place to live. How do you guys like it? Like it? We love it. It's good to see that you've gotten stronger too. Yeah, thanks to you guys. I looked over and saw Stripe's family building a farm next to their home. Us zebras love farming. We promise we will keep this place nice and fed. Awesome. I went and added my second pillar and done. Two down, three more to go. Jenga then walked over to check on me. While you were out on your journey, you'll be happy to know that I found out about the third spirit you need to go out and find, otherwise known as the fire crocodile. Fire crocodile? So what, does he swim in lava lakes? Probably, I don't know. Nearby, there's a swamp known as the Ashen Vines. Find that place and you might just find the crocodile. On days 19 to 22, I made my way towards the Ashen Vines. It didn't take long for me to realize I was headed in the right direction. All of the grass and the terrain slowly but surely was turning into ash. That is when I saw a lava lake surrounded by fiery swamp trees. In the middle of it lied a magma hillside holding a tomb. Is this it? Is this where the fire crocodile resides? Why, yes, it is. A crocodile appeared, hovering over its tomb. Hello, um, I have come here for... I am aware why you are here. Even dead, I can still see the amulet that rests upon you. You wish to set me to rest. That's right. I need to. Not just for me, but a lot of animals are being hurt. My family, they have all passed down a sacred jewel. One that I have lost in my lifetime. I know that I can't truly rest without it. I can go find it for you. Let me help. If you wish to, know that it resides where you are your weakest, deep within the water of a dangerous river not far from here. If you find my jewel, you shall put me to rest. The fire crocodile then vanished. Okay, before I find a jewel, I'm gonna have to find out how I can survive underwater as a fire lion. How hard can it be? On days 23 to 26, I made my way to a large river. Maybe water won't hurt me that bad. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ah, never mind. Well, great. How am I supposed to swim underwater if I can't even touch it? Just then, a water strider approached me. Hey, bud, looks like you've gotten yourself in quite the predicament, huh? What if I told you I can help you out here? You can? How? Whoa, whoa, slow down, okay? It just so happens that I'm in a little predicament myself. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Why would I scratch your back? I, I it's, it's just a saying, genius. Oh my goodness, follow me. I follow the strider over to a coastal camp. What is this? This was my vacation home, but that bird right there is always flying around, causing me issues and attacking me. I'm just trying to get tanned, man, and I'll help you with your water problem. Deal. I walked over. Maybe I can try to reason with it. It then spotted me and attacked on sight. Ah, okay, never mind. It would fly through the air and shoot me with beams through its beak. I fought back by shooting my fire blast at it. I can tell that the beast was hurting. With one more shot, the bird went flying away. Yeah, and stay out. 
Bravo, pal. Here, eat this. The Strider threw me over a water fungus. You want me to eat it? Just do it, all right? Stop being a crybaby. Okay, okay. I did as the Strider told me to. And once I ate it, a water aura was sent throughout my body. Awesome. On days 27 to 29, I jumped inside of the river and now didn't take any damage. Better hurry quick, pal. The effect is only temporary. I listened to the strider and started to swim down deep below the river. Come on, where can this jewel be? I swam and swam until I saw gold shimmering deep below. Perfect. I went down and managed to find an underwater treasure room in the middle of it lied the gem. I was about to grab it when a giant underwater rock fell in the way. My treasure. What? But that gem, it doesn't belong to you. Me no care. The straddler charged in and started to attack me. Hey, wait. It didn't care though and started to throw rocks at me under the water. Ouch. We kept fighting back and forth, but I soon realized it was pointless. Stop it. There has to be some way I can get the gem, can't there be? No, treasure only thing that keep me company. Strad has no friends. Well, what if I can change that? I can tell the rock beast was intrigued. Um, give me one second. I went out and found the water strider from earlier. What do you want, huh? You will be perfect. I brought him back and introduced them to each other. No, Fred. Yeah, yeah, buddy, calm down. The rock beast was happy, and because of it, he allowed me to take the gem. Thanks. No, thank you. Come on, bud. Let's go tan together. On days 30 to 32, I made it back to the lava lake and heard a whisper through the air. Let the lake consume it. I threw the gem inside of it, which caused a huge burst of lava. Whoa. I then felt my body changing. I gained five hearts and felt so much stronger than I ever had. I now had fire aligned over my body and two saber tooth tusks. Because I was stronger, I had a new flame attack ability. Awesome. On days 33 to 35, I returned back home to base. I looked around at all of my animal friends and saw everyone was making themselves at home. The zebras were farming and supplying all of us with food while Jenga was planning for our next mission. Knowing I would keep growing stronger and stronger, I decided to upgrade my den to serve as a symbol for all animals who were in need. I also went over and added my third pillar. Once all five are done, those gladiators will know not to mess with me. Bozo, there you are. We had trouble nearby here a day or two ago. You did? Yep, those coyotes are out on patrol. They want to find you and take revenge for kicking them out of their gravesite. Thankfully, they didn't find our home. Don't worry, Jenga. I'll find them and handle this. Just as I finished my sentence, I noticed a new set of smoke coming from the distance. Could that be the coyotes? On days 36 to 38, I followed the smoke, hoping to find a coyote camp. Then, a couple of snakes slithered by me. Whoa! Run away! Those evil men! Our home is destroyed! What are you talking about? The snakes didn't listen, though, and kept slithering out. I entered the desert, and there waiting for me was a large gladiator mining site. Countless gladiators were there, mining away, stripping the desert of all its resources. Oh, no. Poor desert animals. Yes. With these resources, our arena shall be built up in no time. Invictus, he's here. And you, my number two. I am now entrusting you to go out and find the Fire Lion. I need that amulet. Sir, yes, sir. I must focus on this arena. Do not let me down. Invictus left. Great, now I have more people looking for me? I was about to leave until I saw the coyotes running from the desert. Oh no, they're gonna get themselves hurt. Hey dude. So we just heard your whole conversation with your boss guy here, and we want to join you. That fire lion is a pain. Pathetic animals. You really think we would need your help? Mars started to walk towards them, 
and I can tell they were scared. B but we can help. We are hunters and- Silence! The number two then sliced his sword and took out two of the coyotes. Oh my goodness. No! You, you monster! Take this one to the prison area. We need extras for Invictus's show. On days 39 to 42, I knew that I couldn't just let the last coyote die. While they were stubborn, they were still animals. I snuck through the mining operation, trying to perfectly time the gladiators mining. I went deep inside an underground prison area, and after a bit of searching, I was able to find the last coyote trapped inside of a cell. My friends, my dear friends. Hey, I'm here to get you out. Ah, you! Are you gonna hurt me? What? No. I then opened his cage and let him out. Look, no animal deserves what happened to you. I'm sorry for your loss. Those gladiators? They're pure evil. They don't care about anything besides themselves. Why do you think I'm trying to take them down? Yeah, I'm sorry. I see that now. I may actually know a way I can help you out. Really? That's great. But first, let's get out of here. The coyote agreed. And together, we both were able to escape the operation site. Now, far off in the distance, he seemed excited to tell me about... One of the fire spirits. I know where you can find him. Oh, yeah? Where is that? He is known as the fire vulture. And I know exactly where he resides. On days 43 to 45, my new friend brought me to one of the coldest biomes I had ever stepped foot in. I looked around. Everything looked so... Dead? Well, that's because everything is. Follow me, you scary beast. I followed the rude coyote until we reached a gravesite. The vulture is here? Not exactly. But the entryway is... Entryway to where? He then brought me over to a headstone that was much larger than the rest. You're fired. You need to use it. Okay. I shot my fire out, which caused an entryway to appear. Awesome. All right. You're on your own now. Good luck, lion. He left. Why did he seem so scared? I went down until I reached a dead looking catacomb. In the center of it lied what looked to be an orb of some sorts. Okay. I went over and touched it, which caused the entire room to shake. Oh no, what's happening? Before I knew it, everything turned white. On days 46 to 47, my vision came back to me. Ah, where am I? I looked around and saw nothing but black and a large, vast gravesite. This is what awaits in the future. I turned, only to see the fire vulture sitting on a ledge above, staring down at me. You are giant. Did you say future? In front of you potentially lies all animals that reside in the savanna, the desert, you name it. If the gladiator wins, this will become reality. Wait, so you know about the gladiator? Of course. As a vulture, I am the eyes and ears of what resides in the living world. It is my job. And I know yours is to set me to peace. I have to. It's the only way I can stop Evictus. I shall help you if you save my son's spirit. It has been trapped deep within an ancient temple in the land of the dead. I'm sorry. Did you say land of the dead? But I'm alive. And I shall not be set to peace while my son is trapped in a prison forever. Save my son and I shall give you the essence of my fire. You've got yourself a deal. Where is this temple? On days 48 to 50, I left the vision and went off to search for the land of the dead. It doesn't sound too creepy, does it? I was making my way through a lush forest until I was met with an opening. The vulture told me my way to the temple was this way, but it just led me to a train station? What the? I watched as ghosts got on board and there was a ghost conductor. One way ticket to d -d 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 Dead Central. Let's go, people. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Um, excuse me. Does this lead to the land of the dead? Why, yes, it does. 
those ticket, please? Ticket? No, I don't have a ticket, but I really need to... No ticket and no passage. Now stop wasting my life away. Oh, wait, I don't have one. <sighs> I quickly realized that all of these ghosts were cold. We have no body heat. And these stupid soul flames don't heat us up at all. I can help you with that. I went around the train and used my fire abilities to change the soul flames into regular ones. I can tell that all of the ghosts now were happier. My goodness, heat. This feels amazing. You know what, lion? You can ride with us. You earned it. On days 51 to 53, the train stopped inside of a dead looking area. Is this? Yep, the land of the dead. Enjoy! The conductor quickly went back inside of the train. Great, I'm here. I walked throughout the land until I was met with a very large black temple. This has to be it. The Temple of the Abyss. I walked inside and found a large warm lit room that had an ancient tomb lying in the middle of it. Just then, a small soul vulture appeared outside of it. Please help me. This is the soul. I went over to try to open the closed tomb, but was quickly interrupted by a large bite. Ah! I turned, only to be face to face with a deadly guardian. Literally. Uh, stay back. The guardian didn't listen and started to attack me. It had a massive mouth and kept trying to bite me whole. The death shall consume you. Ooh, stay away from me. I used everything I had on the deadly guardian, but nothing was working. Does fire not hurt your skin? That's when an idea sparked. Don't aim for his skin. I perfectly waited for the guardian to open its mouth again. And once it did, I shot fire directly inside of it, which defeated the monster for good. Sweet. I went over to the tomb and mined open a hole, which released the fire vulture's son. Thank you, Lion. My soul can finally be released. He flew off, and a sense of pride filled within me. You did it, Fozo. You did it. On days 54 to 56, I was summoned back to the Fire Vulture's realm. Whoa, you can just do that? I can when you've impressed me, Fozo. Well done. I then started to float up high, and in a flash, I upgraded. I gained five more hearts and felt my body's strength increase heavily. I got a new ability, which allowed me to summon fire souls to aid me in combat. Sweet! I've never felt so strong before in my life. On days 57 to 63, I went home and saw that the coyote was there, scaring Stripe. Hey! Boo! Ah! Stay away from me! <laughs> this is great! Can you cut it out? Uh, sorry. Don't worry, Stripe. He won't hurt you. I went over to a new spot of our base and made our new coyote friend a home to stay in. It's not a grave site, but it'll do. Thanks! You know... As a coyote, I am skilled at hunting. I'll be sure to gather meat for our base as a food supply. Thanks. Hopefully now you can finally feel like you belong somewhere. After that, I went ahead and built up our fourth pillar. I just need one more to go, and then we're ready. I then looked over and saw Jenga aiding to a kangaroo. Hey, what's going on? The kangaroos, they've been attacked. Oi, the rest of my people, those gladiators, they took down our entire outpost in search of the fire kangaroo spirit. They are the real animals. It's okay. If you are strong enough to, why don't you show me where your outpost is? I think it's time I show them to stop messing with us animals. On day 64 to 68, the kangaroo was able to bring me to its kangaroo outpost. Instead of them being free though, running their empire, they were all stuck inside of cages. That's right, everyone. Round them all up. We need to see if they know where that stupid fire kangaroo is. Should lead us right to the fire lion. He's hurting them because of me? 
this filled me with so much rage. Please, sir, let us go. Silence. The second in command then hit the kangaroo with his sword, which greatly wounded him. I will get what information I can from you. And once done, you will be thrown into the dungeons forever. Not if I have anything to say about it. No, wait. I didn't listen, though, and ran to the camp fully exposing my location. Small gladiators noticed and started to charge in towards me. Their swords hurt quite a bit, but thanks to my new upgrades, I was able to take them down in groups. I am much stronger now. The last bunch pushed me, but I took them out with ease. Oh, wow. <laughs> we finally meet, Fire Lion. Yeah, we do. I've seen what you've been doing, and it's wrong. All of it is. Us animals, we have emotions too. You think I care? All I care about is making Invictus happy. And that will only happen when I take what is around your precious neck. And I will not let him down. I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's not going to happen. So be it. On day 69 to 71, the gladiator rushed towards me. He swung his massive sword, which did lots of damage. Thanks to my new upgrade though, I was able to stand a chance. I shot him with everything that I had and used my new fire souls to aid me as well. <laughs> you think this hurts? You are weak. He kept attacking and attacking and attacking. Ouch! His sword is so strong. I tried using my new attacks to my advantage, even trying to ground slam him, but he was just far too fast for me. I was in a losing battle. He hit me one last time, and I knew I was close to being done for. Oh, poor, poor lion. You really thought you stood a chance, didn't you? How naive of you. I looked and saw that I still had one last fire soul left. He flew off, and for some reason, I knew exactly what he was planning. I watched far off as my fire soul aimed and hit the kangaroo's cage head on, letting them out. Oi, thanks. The gladiator was too distracted to notice, though. Just remember, you are a stupid animal, and you never amounted to anything to begin with. You will die here now, alone. He's not alone. I looked over and saw all of the kangaroos standing there in front of the gladiator. How did you escape? Charge! The kangaroos and I collectively fought him off. It was a losing fight before, but now with the power of these animals by my side, we were winning. I used my fire blast on him one last time, which defeated him. Take that. Oi, thank you so much for saving us, sir. That evil man, he wanted to know where our fire kangaroo ancestor was. We didn't trust him at all, though. But you do know where he is, don't you? The kangaroo seemed a bit skeptical. Look, I know you couldn't trust him, but you can trust me. I promise. Oh, you're right. Go north of here and find Kangaroo Rock Mountain. He resides there. On day 72 to 74, I ventured out north. After a short period, I was able to find a mountain much different than the ones I've seen before. This one had a stone kangaroo head carved out of the side. Welp, here I am, Kangaroo Rock Mountain. As I got closer, I began to hear whispers coming from the stone's mouth. Could it be? I climbed up and reached the monument. Once inside of its mouth, I knew my suspicions were correct. Come to put the final fire spirit to rest, have you? Yes, I have, and I have a feeling you already know why. Correct. The tricky thing is, I want to rest, Lion, more than anything. But for some reason, my heart doesn't want it. Do you know why that is? Do you think there's something stopping you? Why, yes. It's the fire essence that lives within me. It's stopping me from eternal rest. And I wish for your help. What? Do you want me to remove the fire from within you? I mean, that just sounds crazy. Nothing in this world is too crazy. I will show you that now. 
Just then, I felt a huge surge of firepower connect between the fire kangaroo and myself. Ah! ah! I looked around and was now who knows where. You are within my heart, Fozo. I looked off in the distance and saw a fire wisp and watched as it flew off quickly. Go, catch the fire essence wisp. Once done, you will have successfully taken the fire essence from within me, allowing me to rest. Good luck, Fozo. On day 75 to 77, I was running throughout the field trying to find the fire wisp. Come on, why is it so fast? Every time I would spot it, it would just fly off again. This is so frustrating. I have to stun it. I waited for the wisp to stop moving around and knew I had one shot to hit him correctly. Come on, please work. I shot out my fire shot and hit it down to the floor. While stunned, I ran over and was about to pick it up. Suddenly, the entire area began to shake. What's happening? The fire wisp I was about to catch then grew larger and larger and larger. They monster now! Oh no. On day 78 to 80, the now monstrous fire wisp began to attack me. Its fiery attacks were very strong. It used its flying ability to its advantage and would fly up to shoot me from above. I did my best and kept trying to fight back. I fought back harder than I ever had before in my life. I then ground slammed it, which caused it to shrink back down to its normal size. Then I picked it up. Awesome. Just then, I was brought back to Kangaroo Rock Mountain. Did I do it? Yes, well done. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. My body began to transform one last time. I gained 10 more hearts and felt my muscles and strength begin to grow. I could now do an insanely powerful fire rush attack. Awesome! I knew that after all of my hard work, I was ready to face Invictus. On days 81 to 85, I was making my way back home when I noticed something horrible. Everything was destroyed? Oh no! I watched as the animals all around were scared for their lives. Ah, finally, the fire lion joins us. The animal's protector. Well, it looks like you weren't here to protect your people from this, were you? You! I was about to charge in, but Invictus signaled me to stop. I would think again. Just then, Jenga crouched out, looking weaker than ever. <coughs> Fozo. My goodness, what did you do? Does it matter? You want him back? Come to the arena and get him! The two of us will be waiting. Tick, talk. Invictus escorted Jenga out, and I knew that I had to save him. I looked around at all of my friends. I'm sorry, guys. I should have been here. It's not your fault. Yeah, that mean gladiator guy is going to pay. You're right. He will. Together, all of us animals went around the base and repaired it back up. I had to make sure that nothing like this could ever happen again. Once the base was fully repaired, I went ahead and built up the final pillar. And done. With all five pillars complete, I knew my base was finished. Because of it, a fiery aura began to shoot out throughout my home, turning everything to white. On days 86 to 90, I looked around, only to see my dad there in front of me. Dad! Oh my goodness! Son, it is so good to see you. The amount of progress you made, I couldn't be more proud. That evil gladiator, he took me from you. He's hurt so many people. I know, son, but I have been there with you every step of the way. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. I sure hope so. Hope so? My dear boy, I know so. Just then, my vision was brought back to me. I looked around at all of my animal friends and knew that this had to end. It's time we fight back and take what's rightfully ours. That's right. Oh, yeah, baby. The next time you see me, Invictus, 
will be done for. On days 91 to 94, I made my way over to Invictus's arena, and I noticed that it was now fully built. He's putting up a show, all right. I noticed countless gladiators there, holding guard out front. It's the lion, get him! They all charged, and so did I. I went in and started to use everything I had against them. They tried their best with their swords, but at the end of the day, I was just far too strong for them to handle me. After I used my latest fire rush ability, it sent the gladiators running scared. Oh, he's too strong, run! Then suddenly, I heard a voice calling from inside. It's time for the show. Yes, it is. On days 95 to 99, I walked through the corridors, only to see Jenga incredibly weak inside one of the rooms. Jenga! Pozo, my boy, what are you doing here? I'm here to stop this and to save you. I'm afraid there's no saving me, Fozo. I feel so weak. That gladiator, his blade, I tried to fight back, but- No, you can't give up now. We have to get through this together. It's what my dad would have wanted. Your dad would have wanted you to protect these animals. And I, I helped you with that. <sighs> Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Jenga? Jenga, no! Jenga was gone. And right after that, the gates in front of me opened, only to see Invictus in the middle of his gladiator arena waiting for me. On day 100, I walked out and was face to face with Invictus. I looked around and saw a huge crowd of gladiators watching us. Yes, Fire Lion. Do you like it? The world's biggest show yet. You are a maniac and you will soon learn to regret everything you have done. Oh, really? Then bring it. Invictus and I both clashed, which caused the audience to uproar. He was really fast and used his expertise in sword fighting to his advantage. He would jump and slice his weapon into me, which did a lot of damage. I tried to fight back against him, but most of my hits ended up being blocked by his shield. I tried the best that I could, but could tell that I was losing. No, I can't lose. I can't. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Fight, Fozo. Everyone is counting on you. You can do this. You can do this. I leapt up and slammed a very powerful fire attack, which sent Invictus back. He was clearly stunned, and I used this to my advantage. I did everything I could and everything I had against him. My fire souls, fire shot, you name it. I gave my all and thought about all the animals I was protecting. No! No! With one final powerful fire slam, Invictus was down for the count. With him gone, all animals can be treated with respect. On day one, I spawned in as a baby tiger. Why is it so hot? I looked around and found myself in a cage with other tigers. We were over a large pit of lava. I then spotted my mom right next to me. Mom, what's going on? Bozo, gorillas have turned on us tigers. But why? Suddenly, a large silverback gorilla came out in front of the cage. My name is Isar, and I am king of the gorillas. For too long, tigers have ruled the jungle, causing my species to be pushed aside like we are nothing. Now, it is our time to rule. Drop all tigers in the lava. No! It is you that is destined to live on for us and reunite the jungle. I love you, son. Before I could respond, we were dropped in the lava, causing all the other tigers to die. I then pulled myself out and was in complete shock. Why am I still alive? My fur changed into a fiery red color, becoming a baby fire tiger mom no you will pay for this i promise you i'm gonna avenge my fellow tigers impossible how are you still alive see 
chase him! Uh-oh. A group of gorillas came out and began to chase me. I need to get out of here. On day two, I was running as fast as I could. Why do the gorillas hate my kind? I need to find out more. I then couldn't hear the gorillas anymore. I think the coast is clear. <laughs> ah! A gorilla appeared in front of me and scared me. Oh, oh, there's no running from Esau. You're coming with me. The gorilla charged at me, and out of pure instinct, I swiped at him with fire. Whoa. Because I was now a fire tiger, I was granted a fire sword that gave me a fire slash ability. He kept on attacking me, and I was in a lot of pain. I'm too weak to face this guy. I only had five hearts. Anger started to build up within, and suddenly, I roared, and a giant fire tiger head came out of my body. It covered the entire area. What was that? I can't believe I did that. I looked and saw jungle trees burning around me. I caused all of this destruction with one attack? I never want to do that again. <laughs> you monster. I turned around to see the gorilla was gravely injured. You should leave the jungle just like the other tigers. This land belongs to Isar and the gorillas now. There are more tigers still alive? I knew that it was my job to find them and reunite the jungle once again by stopping these gorillas. But where do I even start? I continued running out of the jungle when all of a sudden... Help! Somebody help! I followed the screams to something trapped behind some wood. I quickly mined all of the wood that was trapping him, and a striped cat came out of the wreckage. Hey, thanks! Quick, follow me. And eventually, the two of us reached a forest far away from the fire. I appreciate the save. The name's Felix. It's nice to see another fellow tiger helping his people out. Tiger? I'm sorry, but you're clearly not a tiger. You're just a cat with stripes. Don't say that. I'm more than just a cat. I'm just as strong as a tiger. I know it. Uh, okay, Felix. I'm Fozo. It's nice to meet you. As two tigers, we decided to stick together. Using the wood I collected earlier, I made a crafting table and created a set of wooden tools. Felix came up and told me that he collected some stone. He gave them to me, and I used them to upgrade my tools into stone tools. Now that we had enough materials, we found an area just outside of the jungle to build a nice little base. The two of us built ourselves some small dents to make it feel like home. That's when an idea sparked. This would serve as a safe haven for all future tigers that I find. That night, I quickly caught my new friend up on what had happened to me. I know about Isa, but I didn't think he would start his jungle takeover this soon. I've never seen a fire tiger before. You must be very important with uh, everything going on. I told him that I heard about other tigers being outside of the jungle, and Felix heard that some tigers went up into the mountains not far from base. If you are going to find any tiger, I promise you it'll be there. On day four, I was venturing out into the world until I finally found the mountain that Felix told me about. This was a high mountain's peak, but luckily, tigers are great climbers. I finally reached the top, but I didn't see any of my kind anywhere. Where could they be? Eventually, I saw a tiger standing over the edge of the mountain. Hey, finally! So the rumors of the fire tiger were true after all. You have reason! Rumors? What are you talking about? Suddenly, we heard the sound of gorillas not far behind. Oh no! They finally found this place. There's no time to explain, but take this! The tiger handed me a map, and the sound of gorillas got even closer. You have no way of understanding this now, but you are far too important to die today! Go! Find the four royal tigers! They are the key to making you stronger. The gorillas appeared in front of us, and the tiger told me to run. Leave! Now! I reluctantly did as the tiger asked, and ran down the mountain while he fought the gorillas. It didn't take long for the tiger to be completely overrun. No! It was my fault that the tiger died, but I had to take responsibility and follow the map he's given me. I promise, your death won't be in vain. On day five, I followed the map, and it seemed to lead me into a large cave. I went inside, and I spotted some iron. I then mined all of it, but when I held it, something strange happened. It automatically smelted all of it. Cool. I guess being made out of fire has its perks. I quickly used the iron to craft myself a brand new set of iron tools and left the cave. This should come in handy. The map continued to lead me to the first royal tiger. I wonder what royal tigers are. I then came across a fairly large castle and felt strangely drawn to it, like it was calling out to me. I went inside knowing that the royal tiger had to be here. Hello? Anyone home? I continued walking and noticed a large white tiger was there waiting for me. He seemed different and intimidating. Hello, Fuzo. 
I am Tigris, one of the four great royal tigers. I have been waiting for you. Me? What's so special about me? As the fire tiger, you will unite the jungle once again and free it from Esau's reign of tyranny. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I do not have an answer for that, but I do have something for you. Tigris brought me to another room and revealed the weird-looking enchantment table and realized that that was a thing calling out to me. I walked towards it, and suddenly an orb appeared. I collected the orb and was upgraded into a full-sized fire tiger. Now I had 15 hearts and felt much stronger than before. I invited Tigris to come back with me so that he can help me grow stronger. He agreed and the two of us began to leave his castle. Tigris and I left to find that the place was completely surrounded by Isar's gorillas. Look, it's the fire tiger, get him! Great, it looks like Isar still wants to capture me. Well, it won't be easy this time. A gorilla charged at me and I slashed him with my fire claws, engulfing him in flames. Whoa, I really have gone stronger. Take this! I jumped at another and used my claws to easily burn him away. You guys can't underestimate me now. Ow! A gorilla hit me from behind and took a few of my hearts away. I can't underestimate these guys either. I dodged his attacks and finished him off with my fire claw. That was the last of them and Tigris came out to see if the coast was clear. Everything's okay. Do you know why the gorillas hate the tigers so much? I might know some information about that, but let's talk in a more secure location. Location. Agreed. The two of us left the savanna and headed back to base. On day seven, Tigris and I returned and quickly went to work building him a new home. I used the resources that I collected and built him a den similar to his old one next to mine. I wanted him to feel just at home. Bozo, you're back. Looks like you brought Tigris along with you. Wait, how do you know about Tigris? I know everything about Tigris. He's one of the four royals. Wow, uh, talk about being a fanatic. I also know that Tigris love fish. The cat showed me that he made a little fishing outpost so that we could have a source of food. Wow, thanks, Felix. No worries. Us tigers gotta stick together, right? Yeah, right. I then walked over to go check on Tigris, and he was thankful for his new home. No problem. Now, you said you had information about the gorillas? Ah, yes. Esau. I actually used to know his father. Wait, really? Yes, Esau's father was one of the most peaceful gorillas in all the jungle. The animals all got along with each other thanks to him. Esau loved his father and considered their bond nearly unbreakable. But that all changed after a tragic incident took place during the war. War? What war? Tigris told me that that was all he knew. Everything else was too hazy for him to remember. Hmm, a war, huh? Well, thanks for the info, Tigris. You should get some rest. It's getting late. The next morning, I heard a loud commotion outside. I made my way over and can hear the cries of jungle animals. Isar was there ordering a group of small gorillas around. Find the rest of the jungle mobs and capture them on sight. Once they're captured, then our rule shall begin. There were cages full of the creatures of the jungle. He's not only hurting tigers, he can't be doing this. These animals did nothing wrong. Isar began to leave, and I thought that it would probably be best not to fight him yet. He looks strong. Once he was gone, I came out of hiding. I charged at the gorillas and took them out with my enhanced fire claws. A few more attacks, and I was able to take all of them down but one. One. All that's left is you now. So what are you gonna do? The small gorilla was clearly afraid of me and began to ran back inside of the jungle. Yeah, you better run. I gotta get better at that. I used my claws to free the animals and told them that they were safe. Safe, huh? How are we safe after the gorillas destroyed all of our homes? I felt bad and decided to build them a campsite to give them a temporary shelter. This will do until I take care of the gorillas. The animals thanked me for my help and a parrot told me that it's been a while since they've seen a tiger. The last time I've seen one was a strange looking tiger somewhere off in the desert. The desert, huh? That might be where the next royal tiger is. On day Days 9 to 10, I looked everywhere in the desert until I reached a strange looking temple. The temple seemed to be themed off of a tiger. This must be where the royal tiger is. I reached the entrance of it, but for some reason, I couldn't get inside. Why won't these blocks break? I looked over and saw a book next to the ground. I picked it up and the book said that I needed a certain item for the doors to open. The book read, Return to me the lost totem of the tiger. Only then then shall I grant you access. The lost totem of the tiger? I wonder what that is. I know everything about tigers. I think I know exactly who would know about this totem. Let's see if you really know everything about tigers, Felix.
Sir, what are you doing here? My king, it's the fire tiger. He's gotten stronger. If the fire tiger is upgrading, then so will I. You want to play with fire, Fozo? Fine. It's time to give you a very cold awakening. I returned to base and noticed that my house was a little small for my current size. I think it's time for an upgrade. I collected more materials and used them to make myself a bigger tiger den. There, that ought to do it. Now, to go see Felix. I met with him outside and asked if he knew anything about the lost totem of the tiger. Ooh, I've heard many stories about that totem. Follow me, I'll take you. We started walking towards the location. Wait up, isn't it just a regular totem of undying or something? Totem of undying, are you dying? That lost tiger totem is one of the former ancient tigers who passed away many, many years ago. Jeez, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't mean to show any disrespect. Many don't know where the totem could be, but thankfully, I've done lots of research on my fellow tigers. Wow, you really know your tiger history. On days 13 to 14, Felix and I came across a large hole in the ground. Are you sure this is the place? Of course it is. Trust me, everything will be fine. All right. As we went further down, Felix told me that the totem was located deeper inside. While we were walking, I noticed some iron and used my iron pickaxe to mine it and make myself an iron chest plate and helmet. This should keep me safe from the attacks of Isar's minions. Uh, don't worry about safety, okay? This cave's been here for years. Even if something showed up, I'd just beat him up with my tiger-like reflex. Ah! Hey, leave him alone. I lunge at the spiders and use my claws to turn them into ashes. <laughs> Good job back there. I, uh, I totally had them, by the way. Yeah, sure you did. We continued through a grove and eventually reached a small shrine that was holding a strange totem. I went over and collected it. This is it. This is the tiger's totem. And what's this? There was a wall behind the shrine that displayed something. Is that supposed to be me? It says that the fire tiger will bring unity to the entire jungle through its pure will. So everything that's happening right now was meant to be. Wow, that's a lot to take in, but it's time to bring this totem back and meet with the second royal tiger. I'll meet you back at base, Felix. I returned to the temple, and once I was at the doors, I dropped the tiger totem in front. In a large flash, the doors disappeared. Nice. I walked inside, and it seemed to be completely empty. I couldn't find the royal tiger anywhere. Hello? Is anyone in here? Eventually, I spotted a dungeon and decided to check it out. When I entered, I walked through a hallway and down some steps, where there was another tiger waiting for me. Hello, Fozo. So, I'm guessing you're the second royal tiger, right? I am. My name is Cleo, and I know why you're here. I told Cleo that I wanted to become stronger so that I could return the jungle to what it once was. This day was destined to come, born from a pure tragedy. Listen, Tiger, the second upgrade won't be easy as the first one. You must find the Volcano of Flames. Volcano of Flames? Doesn't sound that welcoming. Look, I know your home is this place, but I promise you, if you don't come with me, the gorillas will find you and harm you. Join me at my base. That way, you can stay safe. Cleo agreed to join, and we both began to leave the desert. On days 17 to 18, Cleo and I were on our way back to base when we noticed something strange along the horizon. The two of us reached a desert village that was completely covered in ice. Even the villagers were trapped. What is this? This is strange. I have a bad feeling that Izar may have something to do with this. But how would he? He's only a gorilla. Don't you think it's strange that as soon as the gorilla found out about a fire tiger, suddenly this happens? You're right. I mean, this is the desert. The hottest biome there is. This isn't natural. I need to get these poor villagers out of the ice. I use my fire claws to melt down the ice and free the villagers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tiger. I thought I was gonna be frozen forever. My nose was starting to feel like a frozen popsicle. I asked the villager how they ended up in the block of ice, and he told us that he had no idea. I was out just minding my own business when all of a sudden, I couldn't move at all. Weird. Me and Cleo both agreed that we needed to hurry and find the rest of the upgrades. Cleo and I returned to base and got to work on building her a new home. I decided to build her a desert-themed den to make it feel like her old place back at the temple. Thank you, Fozo. This home will most certainly suffice. No problem. I'm glad that we can stand up against that evil gorilla. Isar's 
not actually evil. He's just misunderstood. But the way he's acting doesn't seem like it. Shh. Felix, go on, Cleo. The jungle throughout the years knew nothing but peace and happiness. That is, until the players started showing up. Many years ago, the Tigers went through a war with many different players. They were trying to take the jungle for themselves and strip it of its resources, as players tend to do. Tigers were the sworn protector of our biome and did what they needed to in order to protect it. Isar's father also took note of this and helped defend the land to keep his son safe. Son, stay here. I'm gonna make sure these players stay away from our home. Dad, it's too dangerous. Don't worry, I'll be right back. Who goes there? Dad, no! Isar's father suffered a grave injury that led to his death, and poor Isar watched it all unfold. But why does Isar hate tigers? It doesn't make sense. I need to go talk to him. You sure about that, Fozo? Isar might kill you. Maybe I can reason with him or something. Look, I have to at least try, okay? He's hurt. His own father died in front of him. If I can end things peacefully with Isar and unite the jungle the way it should be, then I'm gonna do it. On days 21 to 23, I made my way into the jungle and noticed that it had changed a lot since I'd last been here. Everything felt dark, dreadful, and cold? I also noticed that it was snowing. That is strange. It never snows in the jungle. I continued going further inside and spotted more cages full of the jungle's animals. I freed them, and that's when I spotted a gorilla temple off in the distance. Once I reached the entrance, there were two small gorilla guards waiting for me. Halt! Who goes there? I am Fozo, the fire tiger, and I would like to speak with Isar. Fozo? Isar walked out of the entrance and approached me. I can tell that something had changed about him since our last encounter. How amusing that you have brought yourself to me just to die. I'm not here to fight you, Isar. I just want to talk. The gorilla didn't listen to me, though, and knocked me back with a blast of ice. Whoa, what was that? While you were out getting your upgrades, I decided to make a few upgrades of my own. The attack was so brutal that it took half of my hearts away. Stop this. I don't want to fight you. I've come here to make peace. It's too late for peace now. The tigers will pay. They took everything from me. Isar hit me with another ice attack, and I only had a few hearts left. I was too weak to run. I won't kill you yet. I want the entire jungle to see you die. On days 24 to 26, I was locked up inside some kind of dungeon. Isar won't even listen to me. Is he too far gone to reason with? I need to get out of this cage. I looked next to me and saw a parrot frozen in ice. I need to get him out of here. He could freeze to death. I used my fire powers to free the parrot and warmed him back up. Thanks for the fire. Who would have thought a tiger would help someone like me? I used to hate the tigers, but I hate the gorillas more. They're ruining the jungle. I don't know what the tigers did to you to hate them, but I'm different. I want to help the jungle and make it peaceful again. Well, since you freed me from the ice, I think I can help us get out of here. Ollie was small enough to fly through our cage and managed to open it up from the outside. Wow, thanks, Ollie. Now I just need to find the Volcano of Flames and get stronger. Volcano of Flames? Actually, I know where that is. Really? Ollie told me the volcano's location, and I offered him a place to stay at the base. Don't worry, Ollie. You should be safe there. On days 27 to 29, I arrived at the volcano, and it was a massive area that had lava and fire all around it. This must be the place. I walked up to the edge of the volcano and stared at the lava in front of me. All I can see when I saw it was my mother and the tigers. Instead of giving in to sadness, this gave me more determination than ever and a reminder as to why I'm trying to help the jungle. I eventually reached the top and met an individual there. I could tell that this person was strong. I am the guardian of this upgrade. If you wish to obtain it, you must defeat me in battle. He immediately knocked me away with a fire attack. Ouch! I guess I have to do what he said. Defeat him in battle. I tried to attack him back, but every time I got close, he kept using more of his fire abilities on me. Ugh, this guy's tough. He was getting ready for another attack, but I was too fast for him and used my fire claws to damage him. He tried to fight back, but I slashed him down with my claws to finish him off. The fire guardian dropped an item. I equipped it and immediately gained 10 more hearts. I was also now completely covered in fire. Sweet! I tested out my new upgrade and could 
do the same attack that the fire guardian used. Now I was that much closer to obtaining all of my upgrades. On my way back to base, I knew that fight with that fire guardian was a little too close for comfort. I needed to better protect myself. I went inside of a nearby cave and noticed that it was deep, so maybe I can find better materials inside. I managed to reach a point inside where I found a few diamonds. I then used my pickaxe to get the material. It was enough to upgrade to a set of diamond tools. It's not armor, but it'll do for now. I found some more iron inside of the cave and collected it to finish off my iron armor set. I then returned to base and noticed that Felix was finishing up on building Ollie's new home. Thanks, Felix. You've been really helpful and made me feel welcome at this base. Eh, don't mention it. One of the tiger's biggest jobs is to protect his family. You're part of the family now. Felix saw me walk into the base and came over to welcome me. It looks like you got another upgrade, Fozo. That's great. Yep. I'm halfway there to being a fully upgraded fire tiger. Yeah, don't let that power give you a big head. Pretty soon I'll be just as strong as you two. We'll see, buddy. We'll see. On days 33 to 35, I decided to head out and start looking for clues into finding the last royal tiger. During my journey, I came across a plains biome that was covered in ice and snow. This was just like the desert village back then. Isar's name was written all over it. His power is increasing just like mine. I made my way through the now icy plains and spotted somebody trapped in a block of ice. I walked up and realized that it was a gorilla? Huh? Why would Isar freeze one of his own kind? I used my fire claws to free the gorilla and melted some of the ice in the area away. <laughs> Thanks for getting me out of there. Uh, here, I think this is part of my gratitude. The gorilla dropped some diamonds in front of me and that was enough to craft myself a diamond chest plate. Hey, Thanks for the diamonds, but why were you trapped? Follow me. I'll explain more once we get somewhere safe. The gorilla and I made it to a small outpost, and I stopped at the entrance. This isn't some kind of trap, right? The gorilla just told me to trust him, and I guess I had no other option. I went inside to find that it was only us and a few other gorillas. This is my family, and we've been hiding out here to stay away from Isar and his madness. The gorilla explained that he was for Isar until he found out some of his true motives. I didn't agree to what he was doing. Doing. I tried to stop him, but that ended up with me being frozen. That's not good. All jungle life is at stake, Fire Tiger. Isar is planning to strip away everyone's freedom with his new ice powers. I couldn't let my family go through that. Family is everything to me. Don't worry. I'm gonna stop him, I promise. Isar knows where the third royal tiger is too. You have to get there before his men do. The gorilla gave me the royal tiger's location, and I thanked him for his help. I promise you, I won't let you down. On days 39 to 41, I made it to the third royal tiger's location and found myself in the middle of a swamp biome. The gorilla mentioned that the royal tiger was hiding out in a cave, one that looked like a part of the swamps. When I reached it, I noticed that it was greatly damaged. There was fire all inside. Oh no, was I too late? Hey! I ran further in and spotted the royal tiger stranded by gorillas. Fire tiger, are you finally here? Please come save me. There were a lot of gorillas blocking my path to reach him. I guess I've got no choice. It's the fire tiger. Get him. And I prepared myself for a battle. A gorilla tried to attack me, but I used my fire claw to easily take it down. I also used my new fire ability and was able to take a few more of them. More gorillas ran into the cave though, and I was starting to get overwhelmed. I couldn't fight all of them at once. I then heard the third third royal tiger scream out in the distance. No! I have to do something! Suddenly, another huge fire tiger came out of me again, defeating all surrounding gorillas. No, I didn't mean to use it, but I was so angry. I had no control. I ran outside just to see the third royal tiger was gone. I was too late. That ability I used scared me. It's too powerful for me to control, even right now. I needed to get stronger. I noticed some diamonds were inside of the cave, so I collected them and had enough to fully equip my diamond armor. That should protect me better from Isar's minions and hopefully prevent me from not being able to control my attacks again. Ozo, are you in there? I know that meow anywhere. I went out and saw Felix was there waiting for me. What are you doing here? I'm here to help you out, but as a spy, I was keeping an eye on Isar and happened to find where they took the royal tiger. That's great, Felix. You know where he's being held? They took the royal tiger to the most secure place in all the jungle. And that place is so guarded, it would see you a mile away. It's a risk that I'm gonna have to take. Now show me the way. Felix reluctantly agreed, and I followed him out of the swamps. On days 45 to 47, Felix led me to a large prison with gorillas guarding the entrance. Are you sure about this, Fozo? Look, I have no choice, okay? Now go back to the base and wait for me. Felix wished 
me luck, and I rushed inside. Uh, did you watch that new Fozo video last week? Yeah, well, I heard it was amazing, so I had to check it out, and... Uh... Ah! I used my fire claws to take down the first gorilla, and before another one could react, I used my second upgrade to defeat him. If I want to do this successfully, I have to stay quiet. Hey, I'm here to get you out. Thank goodness. I thought those gorillas were going to kill me. I quickly got the third royal tiger out of the cage, and the two of us ran outside of the prison and made our way out of the jungle. While leaving, I saw Isar's base and noticed that it seemed different than last time. What's up with that? The royal tiger told me that he overheard the gorilla's plan. Isar is going to freeze over the entire jungle. This would only allow gorilla lives to be free and prioritized. Everyone except their own species? That's what the other gorilla meant by using his ice powers. I couldn't let that happen. I needed to hurry and find my other upgrades. The third royal tiger told me that his name was Bangle. We arrived at the base and began working on his new home. I decided to make his home feel more like the swamp and made it out of oak logs. I even added a small pool for him to swim inside. Thank you, Fozo. I love my new home. You're welcome. While I was with them, I happened to find this. Bangle then dropped a book and it was a diary that belonged to Isar. I opened it and began to read it. The diary told me about the events that took place during the war between the tigers and the players. Esau wrote that his father hid him away from the battle to keep him safe, just like Cleo told me. I watched as my father left to go defend the jungle, and that's when it happened. Who goes there? It was a tiger's fault! My father was taken away from me because of a tiger! Dad, please stay with me. Please. Son, it's up to you now. Do what you must. Protect the jungle. Make me proud. No! So, it wasn't a player that killed Isar's father. It was a tiger. Why would a tiger do this? If that's true, then that's the reason why Esau hates us so much. Yeah, but that doesn't explain why he's treating the other animals so poorly too. Why does he hate them? Bangle doesn't know, but he believes that I'll find out soon enough. Finding my third upgrade was more important right now, and Bangle gave me its location. With that, I headed out of base. On days 51 to 53, I reached the location of my third fire upgrade. It was deep underground. I knew I had to be careful. There's no doubt this place is full of traps. I made my way inside and reached the site of my third fire upgrade. There you are. I went over and grabbed it and immediately felt myself getting stronger. Nice. Now I have five more hearts too. But suddenly the entire dungeon started to shake. Oh no. What's happening? I ran as fast as I could when I ran into a giant crocodile. You dare enter my domain. Uh, I was sent here to make myself stronger. This will help all jungle animals. I don't care. I am safe underground here. You shall die for your decision. Wait, no. The crocodile didn't listen though and began to attack. Here goes nothing. I used my new ability and it sent out a giant aerial fire attack. It hurt the crocodile enough for him to run away. That's right. You better run. With this new ability, I am sure I can beat Isar and his men. I was going through the world and all of a sudden, I finally found you, Fire Tiger. He looked even more different than before. His fur looked more blue, and I could tell that he was much stronger. Isar, look, I know what happened to your father. It was a tiger, and I'm sorry, okay? Tigers are meant to lead us in the jungle. They are supposed to protect all of us, but no, they only care about themselves. Isar <laughs> tried to hit me again, but I dodged it and countered with my new upgrade. But Isar was completely unaffected. Has he become too cold for me to melt? Isar managed to hit me with his ice powers again, and I couldn't move for a moment. Ah! This gave him enough time to lay a critical blow on me. Ouch! There has to be more to all of this, Isar. All of the jungle animals don't have anything to do with this. After my father was killed, I realized something. My father's death showed me who the real villains are. Only us gorillas know how things should be. Esau was about to strike me again, but I dodged it and summoned fire all around him. I know there is still good in you, but for now, you're blinded by rage. While trapped, I began to escape and make my way home.
On days 57 to 59, I returned to base completely exhausted. Felix ran over to me and was glad to see that I was okay. I need to stop him, Felix. Yeah, have some fish. He dropped me some fish and I ate them to replenish my strength. I then looked at the small fishing farm and realized that we're gonna have to make that a little bigger if we wanna feed all of our guests. Felix and I both got to work and we made the small fishing farm much larger. Now, hopefully more people can fish at once. I met with the three royal tigers and they told me that they were proud of what I've accomplished so far. I know it doesn't seem like it now, but you're really making progress on saving the jungle. Agreed. More animals are hearing about your legend and are beginning to have hope. Thanks, guys, but Isar still needs to be stopped. We have to find a way to make peace. In order to do that, I need to find the last royal tiger. I might know where she's hiding. Hopefully, Isar and his gorillas haven't found her. Bangal told me the location, and I made my way over. I made my way through the jungle and remembered what Bangle told me. You can find her deep within a certain jungle, but remember, this jungle isn't ordinary. I wonder what's so special about it. I reached the location and realized what Bangle was saying. This jungle was completely surrounded by bamboo. I've never seen anything like this before. It was nice and peaceful, completely unaffected by Isar's ice. Once I reached it, I noticed that some of the jungle animals were also here. A lot of them looked like they were hiding out. What are you guys all doing here? We retreated from our jungle after Esau began his conquest. Most of us lost our families. The jungle isn't what it used to be. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna do what I can to make things right. The animals thanked me for that, and I turned around, only to see the fourth royal tiger. She was a large white tiger who gave off a majestic and peaceful presence. I am Shiva. You must be Fozo. I am, and thank you for taking care of all these animals. Shiva told me that it's a tiger's responsibility. Well, I wholeheartedly agree. Look, I need your help to save the jungle. Now that you have me, you almost have everything you need to reach your final on days 63 to 65, I returned with Shiva back to base, and the two of us worked on her new home. We tried to make it look exactly like her old one. I even added bamboo around it and used some glowstone she had on hand to light it up. Good to see you again, Shiva. Same here, Bengal. Though, I wish we were meeting on better terms. Now that I have all of you guys, what am I supposed to do? You need all the royal tigers with you in one place to upgrade to your final form. Okay, well, let me just go grab the other two, and then we should be good to go, right? Not necessarily. There's still one more item that you need in order to activate your final form. The Lost Fire Claw. Huh, what's that? Ooh, I know. The Lost Fire Claw helps its user unleash their inner strength. Ugh, of course you know, Felix. Where do I find it? The Lost Fire Claw can be found deep within a fortress inside of the Nether. Once you get there, you'll find a secret room that houses the claw. Then there's no time to lose. Before I left, I saw Shiva walk away. I could tell that she was hiding something. Hey, is everything all right? I just... I feel responsible for most of what's happening. But why? The gorillas are the ones who are responsible. It's up to all of us tigers to fix that. But I am the one that caused the gorillas to turn on us. Wait, are you? I am. I still remember the day like it happened yesterday. I heard a noise coming from the jungle. Players had recently hurt my family, and I was blinded by pure rage. And without thinking twice, I jumped out at the noise and kept swinging until I realized what I had done. I am the tiger that killed Esau's father, and I regret it every second. And I still breathe. Shiva, I don't know what to say. You mustn't say anything. It is up to you now, Bozo. Reunite the jungle. It is your destiny. I journeyed across the world until I stumbled upon a cave entrance. Felix said that I could find a good amount of obsidian where the water meets lava. I went inside the cave and I couldn't find anything at first, but luckily it was so big. So I was able to find some eventually. I used my diamond pickaxe to mine as much obsidian that I could find. After leaving the cave, I then found a nice area to start working on the portal. Now all I need to do is light it with some flint and steel. Oh, wait a minute. I'm already made out of fire. I used my third fire ability and the portal was able to activate. Uh, I love love being a fire tiger. Time to go find that fire claw. On day 69 to 71, I found myself inside of the nether. I knew that I had to search all around, but where? Once you get there, you'll 
find a secret room that houses the claw. That's right. I needed to find a fortress. I started my journey across the nether and found a large red building. Is that supposed to be it? I walked throughout the tower and searched everywhere for the claw, but I couldn't find anything. Where could it be? I reached the top and I dodged a fireball. What the? I looked up and came face to face with a large fire dragon. Why did you attack me? You want the fire claw, right? Well, you'll have to beat me to get it. If that's what it's gonna have to take, then so be it. I charged at the dragon and tried to attack, but he was just out of my reach. He then hit me with a fireball and took a few of my hearts away. Good thing this armor lessened the damage. Looks like you're a worthy competitor, but I won't let you out alive. Time to finish this. I don't think so. I activated my third fire ability, which instantly took him down. Whoa, that ability is stronger than I thought. In a flash of light, the fire claw was in front of me. Once I grabbed it, I knew that I had to get out of this place and bring it back to the Royal Tigers immediately. I returned back to the overworld and ah! Isar sped by and hit me with one of his attacks. You think you're the only one busy getting upgrades? You escaped me last time. That will not happen again. You're coming with me, Bozo. Oh no. I used my second upgrade on him and the blow pushed him away. Your fire is still too weak to burn me. You are pathetic. The gorilla blasted me with an ice and took 10 of my hearts out. He's gotten stronger too? How is this possible? I relentlessly sliced Isar with my fire claws, trying to damage him, but it wasn't any good. He didn't even flinch. He just knocked me back with his gorilla strength, and I was low on hearts. I still can't beat him. I need to escape. Before I could run, Isar covered me with his ice powers, trapping me in a block of ice. Now that I have you, my plan will finally be fulfilled. On day 75 to 77, I woke up and found myself inside of a cage. What happened? And where am I? I was surrounded by gorillas, and they were cheering Isar on. Behold, the jungle's last hope will finally be gone, and the time of the gorillas shall begin. No, 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 stop. You don't have to do this. Oh, but I do, and I will. I thought I was done for, when all of a sudden, Felix ran up from behind and knocked Isar off a hill. Talk about pure tiger strength. Take that. Felix. I didn't waste any time. We both made a run for it, but we were stopped to see a bunch of gorillas in our way. I dodged the first one's attack and used my claws to take him down. Then I used my second upgrade to take down a few more. Oh, Felix, you shouldn't be here. More of the gorillas started showing up, so I tried to use my third ability to burn them away, but I was running low on hearts and Felix knew it. We gotta get out of here right now. You are going Nowhere. Suddenly, an ice attack got shot out. No! Felix jumped in the way. Felix! Anger built within me to the point where I unleashed another fire tiger. It killed all the gorillas, leaving only Isar. We will meet again. Oh, come on, buddy. We've got to get out of here. No, Fozo. I'm not going to make it. Listen, you have what it takes to save the jungle. I know it. We all do. I just hope I was a hero like you. All I ever wanted to be was... A real tiger. Felix? Felix! No! My friend was gone. I promise. The world is gonna know about what you did today. Everyone will. I showed up, and the other royal tigers were outside waiting for me. Bozo, you're back! Thank heavens! Where's Felix? Guys, Felix, he didn't make it. They were all saddened to hear the news. I found a spot at the base and created a memorial for Felix. There, everyone stood and mourned for his loss. You were the bravest and brightest feline I ever met. You always cared about everyone and took care of them. Your passion for tigers knew no bounds. As the head of the Royal Tigers, we hereby deem Felix worthy of being a tiger, and we make him the fifth Royal Tiger. You see, Felix? You were more of a tiger than any of us, and you proved that every day you were alive. I'm gonna miss you, my friend. It's time for the Age of Gorillas to begin! Now, no one can do anything or do any harm, just as things should be.
On days 81 to 85, I noticed that my entire base was snowed over. Oh no, this has to be Isar. I then looked over to the Royal Tigers and they told me that it was time for me to unlock my final form. I needed to go and meet them at the Tiger Ritual Ground. I journeyed across the world and noticed that more of it was covered in snow. Isar is getting stronger by the minute and he was making sure that everyone suffered his icy wrath. As I made my way towards the ritual site, I saw a camp that was completely covered in ice. I ran up to it and saw jungle animals trapped in cages. They looked like they were all freezing to death. I activated my third upgrade and used my flames to melt all the ice away. Oi, oi, thanks, Fire Tiger. We thought we were a safe distance away from Esau, but I guess we were wrong. I'm sorry, but I don't think anyone is safe as long as Esau is doing as he pleases. The animals told me that the jungle has become a frozen wasteland and the gorillas are the only inhabitants there. I've got to reach the ritual site and reach my final form. Only then Will I be able to reverse all of this? I reached the site and found Shiva was there waiting for me. So, you finally made it, Fozo. Yeah, so this is it, huh? We walked over to the pit of lava and she explained to me that if I wanted to unlock my final form, I needed to bathe in the lava once again. So, I started in lava to become the fire tiger and now I have to go in it to unlock my final form. I guess that makes sense. All four of the royal tigers went at each corner of the lava pit, waiting for the ritual to begin. I guess it's up to me now. I walked up and tossed the lost fire claw inside. Then I knew it was time. Wish me luck. A vision began to run through my mind. I found myself inside of the jungle, but it was quiet and peaceful. A tiger walked up to me and told me that he was my guide to unlocking my final upgrade. I would tell you what your upgrade is, but you already know the answer to that. Flashes of the fire tiger head filled me with doubt. I don't know if I should use this power. It may be too strong for me to handle. I almost burned down the entire jungle the first time I used it. You are the only one who could use this power. If you ever want to unleash that power's full potential, you must accept that it's a part of you. The vision disappeared, and I was outside of the lava pit. I noticed that I gained 10 more hearts and felt way more in tune with my powers. All the tigers agreed that I had become the full-fledged fire tiger. On days 91 and 94, we were all back at base as I prepared to go save the jungle. Shiva came up and asked if I saw anything while I was in the lava. I quickly explained her my vision. If that is all you need to do, then trust in yourself and you will see this through. Thank you. I'll try to do that. If things go south, make sure you get all the animals to safety. Shiva agreed and hoped that I would reverse all of this. I can tell that she felt really bad about what happened to Isar's father and I knew that it was up to me to make things right. I went over to Bengal's house and met with him. He was worried for my safety, but believed that I would be all right. Those gorillas are pretty scary, but you can show them how scary us tigers are. Thank you. I then went over to Tigris and Cleo, and they both wished me luck on my upcoming battle. All right, Felix, this is it. It's time that I go save this jungle. I reached the edge of the jungle, and it was just as I had feared. Isar had turned this once beautiful home into a cold and icy wasteland. I surveyed the area and saw the jungle animals being held captive while the gorillas laughed at them. Please, you can't do this. Oh yeah? And who's gonna stop us? That would be me. I used my fire charge attack to easily take down the gorillas. I then quickly free the jungle animals out of their cages. Get out of the jungle. It's not safe here yet. More small gorillas started to show up and began to surround me. Unfortunately for them, my upgrades have maxed out thanks to the ritual. I unleashed my third upgrade and burned all the gorillas around me. Now, all that's left was Isar. I felt a chilling wind pass by me and knew that was where he was. It was time to finish this. On day 100, I finally arrived at the place Isar was waiting for me. This is your last chance. Please surrender now. Together we can bring peace back into the jungle. Peace, there will only be peace. Once you and the rest of the animals are gone. Isar tried to blast me with ice, but I quickly dodged it. Look, the tiger that killed your father, it was a mistake, an accident. Shut up, stop lying. All tigers shall die. The gorilla was far too gone. I have no choice. I circled around Isar and slashed him from behind with my fire claws. It seemed to finally damage him because he retaliated, but I had to bear the pain. I used my second upgrade on him and knocked him back. Then my third to greatly weaken him. This was it. I have to believe in myself. No! 
I activated my fire head to finish off Isar, melting all the ice away. I'm sorry, Isar, but it's over now.